Today is the 20th of May. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning. It's actually Yuka's third birthday today, but my period is also technically six. I'm holding up a thumb. <laughs> six days late, which I don't know. I'm trying not to be like excited about it because. Every four months, my period is about 37 days. Maybe it's delayed because of stress or being sick, but um, I'm gonna test and I'm hoping it's a positive. I'm gonna take another test. Is this pregnant? But I'm gonna take another one. I took the test, it turned freaking positive straight away. Oh my god. I'm third birthday I took a pregnancy test and I got two two lines straight away it was instant the lines were so dark and I jumped up and down with joy and I I didn't film the exact moment that I took the pregnancy test I thought I was filming and I must have stopped and intended to restart but I didn't restart because I in my mind thought it was still going but anyway I filmed taking the second one which was the same thing it was an instant two lines um, and I told my husband straight away and my sister was staying with us at the time so I told her straight after that and we were so excited because we we want this pregnancy we wanted to be pregnant we had been trying for already eight or nine months at that point unsuccessfully so to us that was like so exciting that it had finally happened and to find out on Yuka's birthday was so sweet because we had been successful unsuccessful all the months before I honestly presumed that it was going to be negative I had had negative tests before and so I was preparing myself for that so when it was positive, I was very shocked and that's why I was jumping up and down because I was just ecstatic. The next day, my dad came to Bali. He was coming to stay for two weeks. So when we picked him up at the airport, I made a sign and said, you're gonna be grandparents again. That was really nice to be able to share it with them like straight away. And also when I opened the app, like a pregnancy app to try and calculate my due date, the due date fell on my cousin and one of my best friend's birthdays. So everything kind of seemed like aligned. Like my family was there to find out straight away. The due date was my cousin's birthday and we found out on Yuka's birthday. It all seemed very sweet and aligned. Like, oh, if, if we hadn't been pregnant all those months before, but now this is the time that we're pregnant, it seemed like it was perfect. So my family were there for the next few weeks, so I just tried to eat as best I could and try to get plenty of rest in between the few activities that we were doing and 
just kind of enjoyed them being here and, and having the distraction and, and keeping busy and I didn't start feeling too sick until the end of their trip so that was good like the first part of the trip was probably a bit early to be feeling nauseous at least but I had experienced some other symptoms like sore breasts and a little bit of insomnia like I wasn't sleeping as well as I normally would and that's even still until now I'm not sleeping through the night all the time and then I would say the nausea started about week five for me I mean when I found out according to the app and the following day it, it automatically turned week five so it was like week four week five basically when I found out my family went home after a couple of weeks but um, I had decided I wasn't going to go to the doctor yet anyway I wanted to wait until week eight because that's when I knew it's kind of the standard from most places because then you can see the baby at that time you can actually you know, it's not just the egg or the embryo, you can see the beginning of a baby and I wanted to wait to then to see that everything was healthy and, and get some reassurance by what I saw and when we found out we were pregnant with Yuka, I actually found out in week 8. So I went straight away with Yuka and I remember seeing her and you know, she was a baby so I wanted to see it at that point again with this one. Today is Sunday, so according to my app, it's already week nine from yesterday, but I went to the doctor at eight weeks and three days, maybe. I went on Wednesday this week, and basically, it didn't go to plan. And I had this feeling that things weren't going to go to plan, not necessarily in a negative way, but I was thinking that I'm going to find out some kind of information that's maybe surprising thought it was like a positive unexpected thing but it was actually more of a negative thing so the doctor also calculated about eight weeks like me and so when he started the ultrasound I looked straight away and I was like there's no baby you know, like it, it didn't look how it looked with Yuka. I remember how it looked with Yuka, even though it was a few years ago, there was no baby. I could see, now know it's the gestational sac, but I didn't know that at the time. Like, But I saw something and I just said to the doctor like, oh, am, am I pregnant? He was like, yeah, you're pregnant. And I was like, oh, okay. Cause like, it doesn't really look like anything. And he just was like, yeah. It's uh, the gestational sac and, and he was looking around as he was kind of talking to me a little bit and he said it's a gestational sac that's appropriate for five weeks gestation and he did say I can't see the embryo inside of the sac, the size is normal for five weeks but the embryo, the actual baby developing inside the gestational sac, he could not see yet. It's not unusual for five weeks sometimes they don't see the baby until later but there was the possibility that the pregnancy had started normally so the gestational sac developed but at some point the pregnancy may have stopped developing and so the embryo the actual baby did not continue to develop he's pregnant yeah <laughs> doesn't look like anything this is the beginning of pregnancy yeah Okay. This is the sac, the sac of pregnancy. But mm -hmm. the sac of pregnancy, if you see this, this is some. Uh, uh, it is not fulfilled all in the the hole of the womb yet. That you can see a little bit dark over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I see the stational sac. I see the stational sac. So mm -hmm. It is appropriate to five weeks. Of course, for five weeks, I am not expecting baby yet. To be honest. I see it, it's a little bit bluer. If it, is, it should be sharp color. Mm -hmm. The black color should be black. So he said there is the possibility that the pregnancy won't continue. And he also said that our gestational sac was not exactly a great shape. Like normally a gestational sac would be round and oval shaped, but ours was a little bit elongated. And also he said it would show up really clearly on an ultrasound, but ours was a bit fuzzy around the edges. And the last thing he said was that um, 
he could still see space between the uterine wall and the gestational sac so it was attached on like one half but not attached on the other half yeah there were like a few negatives opposed to the positive is that it's normal not to see a baby at five weeks sometimes so after all the information he gave us he basically said like it's a 50 50 chance of it going either way and he told us to come back in two weeks and if I have not started to miscarry on my own that he would do another ultrasound to check if there has been any development, any growth, whether we can see the baby or not. But he also said there's the strong possibility that during these next two weeks I may start to miscarry on my own or if the two weeks come and they look and there's been no growth, no development, I may need to have a procedure to end the pregnancy. So, of course, as soon as I left the room and we got in the car, like, I just burst out crying, you know, like, like I said in the beginning, we want this pregnancy, we want it to be a beautiful, healthy, happy baby, and it was, like, really confusing and disappointing. Possibly there's no baby there at all, and yet, because your body started the pregnancy normally and developed to a certain point, your body is creating the exact same hormones as a normal pregnancy. And your body, because it still thinks it's pregnant, is still creating those hormones. And so you still feel all the normal pregnancy symptoms, you know? So I have been feeling exactly the same as I did when I was pregnant with Yuka. I'm having all the same symptoms so I feel pregnant so it's very confusing to now think that there's a possibility that I'm pregnant but it's not going to come into fruition as a baby as soon as you get a positive pregnancy test you imagine how your life is going to change you imagine this new baby you imagine your pregnancy and your labor and welcoming the baby at the end of it and even last week I bought pants for the baby, I bought new mom baby clothes because I was expecting a baby. So yeah, I was just very emotional receiving that news. I was confused and scared and doubtful and hopeful at the same time and I was angry. There was the possibility that I'm anticipating a miscarriage at any moment. And no matter whether I start a miscarriage naturally or if I happen to have to have a procedure to miscarry, like I don't want to go through a miscarriage in any way, shape or form. Like that dread was hanging over me. And then also the thing hanging over me is like, I feel like crap, I'm nauseous, I'm sick, I'm exhausted, I'm tired. And I'm gonna have to go through the next two weeks feeling that way. And at the end of that two weeks, it could possibly all be for nothing. So I was frustrated at my body. Today, Sunday, so it's been the fourth day since the doctor's appointment. And I woke up, I suppose, feeling a little bit more hopeful or positive. I've been researching like these whole past few days, just like researching what it is and what are your options, if that is what it is and blah, blah, blah. And today I've been researching misdiagnosed ones of this. There are quite a few cases of misdiagnosed miscarriages or missed miscarriages. And specifically what I possibly have is a blighted ovum. In Indonesian it's Hamil Kosong. Some of their stories are quite similar to mine. I've decided that I need to be a little bit hopeful. I can't let all of the doubt weigh down on me because it could go either way. We have to stay a little bit positive and hopeful until we really get like a, a certain sign that it's gonna go either way. The waiting is really hard, the, the not knowing is really hard, and like I said, anticipating miscarriage, but maybe not kind of thing is really hard. I'm trying to change my mindset. I was feeling all doubtful, and today I'm feeling positive, but I want to, get to a place where I'm in the middle and I 
have a balanced view of it because I also don't want to become so hopeful and so positive that when we go back to the doctor in two weeks that if there's no progress, no development, that I don't feel that disappointment all over again. You know, like I don't want to build myself up so much that I'm 100% sure I'm going to see a baby because I don't think that's realistic either. I'm really just trying to stay in the middle so that I can get through these next two weeks and feel so heavy in my mind. I wanted to share it as it's happening because it's just been insane. I didn't know that this was a thing before it has happened to me. Apparently it is very common. It accounts for 50% of all miscarriages within the first trimester of pregnancy. So it's a very common thing to happen. And so I just want to share it because I want people who are going through the same thing to be able to hear other experiences and have hope but also be realistic and, and just not feel alone because it's a very confusing feeling because you feel pregnant, you think you're pregnant, you're expecting a baby and then all of a sudden maybe you're not. If you guys have questions you can leave them below because I would be happy to answer with what I can but of course this is not the end of our journey, we're still waiting. We still have a week and a half to wait. That's maybe going to be the hardest part. It's the waiting. But we'll see. This is why I haven't been on YouTube for so long. I've been going through so much, thinking I'm pregnant and feeling nauseous and sick until this happening. So yeah, I'll update you guys again when we see the doctor for the second time. Hopefully it's good news. Tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long